I'm so glad that you could join us again today. It's always a good day when you wake up, but it's also a great day when you get to play with toys. So today we are going to discuss the Ender 3 printer. So if you tuned in to the last episode of the 3D printer, I won this Ender 3 from Electroboom's channel. You can check him out in the comments. I was definitely one of my favorite channels and I was pretty lucky to be able to win this guy. So by popular request, we had ourselves a build video and now what we're gonna do is just continue on with the 3D printing series. Now, I will go to what y'all wanted to see, which was this little guy. This was our pig sample print that came on the printer. And as you can see, it actually ran out of filament uh, before it was anywhere near done, which is a little disappointing that they would have sample prints and the sample filament that came with it didn't actually print it. But c'est la vie, I have plenty of filament laying around and it was not that big of a deal. Now I could uh, you know, comment that there's a little bit of ghosting on this guy, they were probably driving it a little too fast, and it also has uh, a little bit of retraction tuning that I would have liked to see. But you know, it's a sample print, easy cleanup, not that bad. However, sometimes your prints need fixing, and this one, it doesn't even fit a quarter. Maybe it's designed for Chinese coins, I don't know, but what I would like to show you is that sometimes you can fix your print without modifying in CAD and you don't have to print another one. So let's get right to it. For this you will need a coin to modify your slot opening. You will need a pair of pliers to get some good torque on this guy and you will need a torch. We want to be very careful about heating this up without causing fires. We also want to be very careful that we don't catch our table on fire. And now all we do is modify. Oh yeah, look at that. Just, just wiggle it around. There we go. Nice and stinky. We got plastic all over our coin. Okay, no, no, not too bad. That'd probably go into a coin slot still. And look at there, it fits right in. So easy modification. If you have a print that is an assembly coming apart or a print that doesn't quite fit an object, you can always modify it with a little bit extra heat and some metal. Uh, for the assembly, you can usually do something that, uh, you know, just basically burns the part together. And that works out pretty good. Whew, burnt plastic though. <laughs> Have you ever modified a print like this? Maybe with some heat and metal? So moving on to the reasons why I use 3D printers. The majority of my 3D prints are not something that I care about how it looks. Matter of fact, I'd probably say 100% of my prints, I don't even care how they look. Matter of fact, if I was going to rate it on a scale, it would be one half to one third of a rat's ass is how much that I care about the looks of a print. What I care about is utility. But if we want to look at what a difference that can be made, actually, let's go to the printer here. What kind of difference can be made on different printers? And technically this is the drivers of the printer, the stepper drivers that make the difference. As you can see on this one that was printed on my Mono Price Select V2 at home, compared to the one that came off of this Ender 3. Now they're slightly different types of plastic, but you can see the, the salmon skin effect on this guy and, and maybe Maybe we can kind of turn this back and forth a little bit and it'll show up in the camera. But you can tell that this one has a salmon skin effect, whereas this one is nice and smooth. And from my understanding, this Ender 3 actually has an upgraded driver board because the first run of these did have a salmon skin effect. Now, in the case of my Mono Price Select V2, what can be done, because there's really no tuning that can get this out, you know, uh, your acceleration, your jerk settings will not affect straight line uh, surface finishes, but what you can do is install what is called TL smoothers. Now the TL smoothers are essentially just a diode bridge that blocks the really, really low voltages that your stepper may either be receiving or sending out. And from my understanding, what happens is that when the stepper motor is told stop, of course, when amperage is flowing, it doesn't like to stop flowing and the inductance of the motor will send back EMF back into your drivers. And what does that do? That usually influences the position of your motor. Just enough to where depending on the speed of it, it will give a little bit of texture. 
So the TL smoother boards will block that little bit down there and it actually affects the dynamics of it because you're essentially putting less voltage to your motors. Uh, you know, so it's one of those things, do you really care about the surface finish? Is it something that you want to chase? Are you printing round objects to where, well, it really doesn't even matter because it doesn't show up? You know, these things are all things that you have to consider. Now, let me know in the comments if you have used TL smoothers before on your Ender 3 or any other printer for that matter, or if you even care about straight line finishes such as this. I personally don't. But what I'm gonna do anyway is get a TL smoother just so I can do some testing. I've always really you know, hesitated to just chase those kinds of things because I don't really care about it. But you know, for the sake of testing and the sake of knowledge, sometimes I do like to step outside of my own box. So moving on to what I usually print. Here are some examples. This is probably one of the only upgrades I'm going to print for the Ender 3. I have found that when my fingers are moist from sweat, when I grab this to adjust it, I will actually trip the button on the back of the board or the scroll wheel on the back of the board with my finger. And that's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. It's just really annoying when I'm trying to do something and it scrolls on me because my fingers are moist. So this cover, which is found on Thingiverse, just bolts right into the back and that will allow me to, you know, grip fully with my hand and utilize that guy without tripping it falsely. So probably the only upgrade that I will do for it, but we'll get into more upgrades later. Let's talk about what I print, what I like to use 3D printers for. It is almost exclusively tooling and prototypes. And because of that, I really don't care about the surface finish. Now, you may care about the surface finishes. Let me know in the comments why you would or what parts in particular you really wanna have that smooth finish on. But here's one example. This is printed out of PETG and it's uh, you know very hollow on the inside and it has this, this uh, you know, uh, I don't even know what to describe, a little standoff on top. You may be wondering, well, what the hell is this thing? This is actually to allow my six-year-old to help us assemble the little bottles that we put conformal coating in. You put the brush for the bottle into this, just like so, and then you use the cap and you push down on the cap. Usually we have ourselves a little press, makes it easier, but viola. It has been pressed together, it is straight, and you, <laughs> you don't have your fingers getting tired over a long period of time. I made these so that my son could help us. He's only six, he doesn't have the best hand strength. Uh, I made them specifically for him and my employees caught on to them extremely quick because by the time you shove a hundred of these together by hand, it ends up really tiring at your fingers and actually hurting the thumbs. So what was done so that my son could help us with some assembly tooling is actually something that all of my workers ended up enjoying. So there's one. Here is another. These are machined jigs for assembling motors. Now, there's nothing wrong with using machined jig parts. However, over time they have to be replaced. And on the average, I would usually spend about four hours between machining and setting up for each batch of jigs that I would make. And if we were lucky, they would last for maybe 25 motors or, or 50 motors. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it does get tedious constantly replacing our jigs. So what I ended up doing over time is integrating jigs into our 3D printing. And these are of course cheap enough. There's hardly any plastic to them. They only take a few minutes to print. We can just put them inside the motor, glue it together and just leave them there. And that is extremely handy for prototyping and for short run production. So when I come out with a new motor, usually the first 100 or 200 or 500 or whatever ends up being produced in house with all of our assembly work until we get it really tuned in. We use these and then what I end up doing is making the housing actually self jigging and we can essentially get rid of that part of it. But that is another reason why I really love to use 3D printing and something that, you no, know, of course, I don't care what the surface finish is on this because it's gonna be hidden away inside of a motor or inside some other assembly and all it needs to do is have tight tolerances. It needs to be printed very accurately. So that, that's usually what my concern is, is the accuracy of a print. And of course we have, you know, our motor top hats, which are printed on the Monoprice Select V2. You can't see the salmon skin on this really. Uh, it's a round object, it doesn't show up, and it is still functional. And a functional part is what we're going for here. Same thing for these little guys here, these road cones. 
You can't see the salmon skin effect on it because it is a round object and not a straight line. So does it really matter that the salmon skin effect would happen on that printer? In this case, no. So up to this point, I haven't even worried about it. And the final piece that I would like to talk about is this. This is essentially a soft jaw so that we can machine our armatures and specifically the shafts without damaging them inside the vise. And this was printed once again on the Monoprice Select V2. You can see that uh, salmon skin effect that people love to complain about, but it is a very functional part. And the way that it goes is we put these in the jaws uh, of the vise as soft jaws. We slap our motor armature in there. It clamps down and then we are able to machine the shaft and specifically put put the flat part onto the shaft for some of our armatures that don't come with a flat part. The utility of the part is really what I go for on my prints, and I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. Um, fortunately, the Ender 3 doesn't have any of that uh, rippling effect on the surface, but if it did, to tell you the truth, it wouldn't even bother me. So what would you want to upgrade on your Ender 3? Let me know what upgrades that you may have put on there or what you would want to put on there based on your needs. Your needs will probably be different than mine, but as I've talked about, at least one functional part that I wanted to put on here was for the cover on the back. But besides that, to tell you the truth, I'm probably not going to do anything to this because it does seem to print just fine for my needs. The one thing that would make me need to upgrade this printer is different materials. If I'm going to print PETG, TPU, ABS, or nylon, then the hot end on this printer just will not tolerate it. You will need to have an all metal hot end to essentially work very well at all. And that is the one thing that I may end up upgrading on this printer. However, at this point in time, I do have one, two, three, four, five, six printers that are all up and running. And so my preference is to have printers that are set up for high temperature materials and then printers that are set up for low temperature materials. I understand that most people aren't gonna have that, that sort of thing available to them just to have multiple printers laying around, but I have kind of worked myself into a corner with having too many printers in some ways. And so what my preference was probably gonna be is to keep this one as a PLA printer and every now and then maybe an emergency situation throw some PETG through there, but over time it will break down the Teflon liner inside the hot end. So that is the one consideration that I would say is very important for you to have. If you are looking for high temperature materials, you will need an all metal hot end. But otherwise, I really don't feel that this printer needs any upgrades, but it is a rabbit hole that you can certainly go down. There are tons of upgrades you can do. Thingiverse has parts on parts on parts. You can practically print a whole new printer from your printer if you really wanted to. And at that point, it's really a hobby. You can hobby your way into having years of fun with printers and really not have any upgrades that are substantial, so to speak. But at the same time, you're learning, you're having fun. You're... As far as upgrades go, I would like to mention that the stock firmware on the Ender 3 does not seem to come with thermal runaway protection. And I have been advised to change that out to a Marlin, I think 1.9 or something like that to get thermal runaway protection. And I would agree that that is actually something that should be done. It is always a bummer when you have a part fail and it's usually going to be your either your thermistor on there, the NTC that tells your brain board what the temperature is if a wire breaks on there or if the actual NTC itself breaks then you will go into a thermal runaway to where the hot end just gets hotter and hotter and hotter because the brain thinks that it's cold and in that case having that sort of firmware protection is a really good idea because otherwise you can burn down your house so that may be the one upgrade that I do it is not a hardware upgrade it is just a firmware upgrade I'm not printing new parts or anything so maybe I will let that one slide the two other upgrades that I should mention is a filament guide because right now this filament, whenever our carriage is all the way over, this filament will rub on the frame or you know maybe get some grease on it on your uh, your Z lead screw here. Now that one may be a good idea. That's kind of up to you. It depends on where your print printer mostly sits inside your prints and where you also start your prints on your printer bed. If you're mostly over here, I don't think there would be a problem, but if you do print large objects and you have a lot of time over on this side, I think it would end up rubbing or getting contamination from the lead screw. The other thing that I probably should do, and I noticed it when I took apart the motion controller board on the last video, is that the wires are soldered where they go into the screw terminals. 
And that's always a bad idea. It doesn't have good conductivity and with any sort of thermal cycling, you will find that the terminal blocks get loose over time. They will not do that with a stranded wire. So it is just probably a really good idea to snip the ends of those wires off, get the pretend end off of your wires and then put them back in and snug it down. Of course, you need to strip the wire first. I assume you would know to do that, but I should mention strip the insulation off the wire and then snug those terminal blocks down. But beside those items, you know, for the price, which is actually under $200 now, I would say the Ender 3 is a pretty solid choice, especially if you use Loctite on everything. So what gripes do I have with this printer? There actually aren't very many. Number one, the sample filament wasn't enough to print our sample. It's a pretty small gripe, but that's just maybe a little disappointing that they give you these files and then they give you some filament and you can't quite print them. So just be prepared for that. You'll need to get your own filament. I'm using 3D Solutech filament at the moment, but there are literally thousands and thousands of choices out there. Number two on the gripes, micro SD cards. Come on guys. I don't even have large hands and this is super fiddly. Just, oh yeah, oh man, I just lost it on the floor. The spring is so much on that little bitty card, it just shot out like five feet. So, <laughs> micro SD cards, come on guys, use either full size cards or just get away with the card slot altogether and force us to use USB. I don't like using USB because it has its own problems. If you have a glitch in your computer, your computer goes to sleep mode, something like that, your printer will halt. And that's always a bummer. Um, however, they did use a standard mini USB, not the micro little fiddly size or the C or anything like that. They did use the, the slightly larger one and that's a really, really good thing for them to do. They're not trying to save a single freaking penny on the board. Uh, that always annoys me. What I would love to see is actually the larger, I think it's the B size, it's the printer, you know, the big old square thing that you hardly ever see. Those are actually better suited for something like this where you, you would have a cable, you know, going across your, your table, but they're probably not gonna do that. There's not many printers that have that, so I'm not gonna hold my breath, especially on this, you know, sub $200 printer. And number three on my gripe list. These are the only three that I have. Oh, I don't like Bowden tubes. I really don't like Bowden tube setups. And to illustrate why I don't like Bowdens, let's just look at this print. So I went with 0.2 millimeter coast and a two millimeter retraction on this one. On a direct drive extruder, 1.5 millimeter is typically enough. And I knew better, honestly. I knew that we probably needed five millimeters of retraction but I, I didn't set it. So we have this stringing and it's not really that big of a deal. It'll clean off super easy. These parts are gonna be drug across the rocks. So, you know, it's kind of a, a, a whatever, but I just don't like how finicky Bowden tubes can be. It is more parts to fail. Uh, you really have to keep an eye on them over time because they will wear out. And on top of that, your attraction and your coast has to be tuned based on the speed that you're printing and the filament that, that you're printing. This means that if you change brands, if you change colors, if you change types, you know, going to TPU, or if you even change speeds, that changes how much pressure is built up in your Bowden tube, particularly the speed aspect. The faster you go, the more filament that you're shoving through and the higher pressure that your Bowden tube will have. And the Bowden tube flexes. It will hold that pressure as essentially potential energy. And as you get to the end of a line or the end of a side of a print and you need to do a retract, you will have to retract further and further and further as your speed goes up to make sure that you have a clean retract. Now, if I had printed this at half speed, I probably would have been fine with two millimeter, two millimeter retract. However, it was at 60 millimeters a second, I was kind of pushing the speed on this. And as you can see, it needed a little bit better tuning. So that's my rant on the Bowden tubes. I won't go any further into it, but needless to say, I'm really not a fan of them. So I might do a direct drive on this, but at the same time, do I really need to chase it or maybe just a little bit of tuning will get what I want. More than likely, I'm gonna go the easy route and just change a number from two to a number five inside of my slicer software and go from there. And I do think that is probably gonna be it for today. 
In the next video, you will see what I am using these for, and that's probably going to be what most of you want to do, is make custom parts for yourself for custom crawlers. So I think that's probably where we're going to go on the next part of this series, but if you do have some other ideas for us, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear them, and I would like some ideas on what y'all would like to see for the 3D printer series. So as always, thanks for tuning in, and have a good one.